Now, Bella and Ella are preparing for an epic party. Can you figure out who's not very smart? Even though Bella looks as if she's about to touch a hot iron, the device is actually unplugged, so she probably won't burn herself. Meanwhile, Ella is about to touch a heated waffle. Bella and Ella text their friend named Mike, who never answers any questions directly. They invite him to go to a party together. Mike's answer is kinda weird. Sorry, no money, job and job. Now, can you help the ladies crack Mike's message? Mike said he had no money because he was in between jobs. Bella and Ella arrive at the nightclub and see a huge line at the entrance. The local guard, Greg, checks people's ID cards. His task is not to let in suspicious people and folks under 21 years old. Here's the first guest's ID card. What do you think? Can you help Greg decide if he can let this visitor in? She seems fine. Let her in. Yes! Here's the next guest. What do you say? June 31 hmm, doesn't exist. There are only 30 days in June, so no entry, buddy. Oh, no. Now, what about this guy? Something's wrong with his birth date as well. There was no February 29 in 1977. That wasn't a leap year. Hmm. And what about this lady's ID? Yep, she's good to go. Okay. Here's another candidate. What do you say? Well, he's 22, so he seems fine. Finally, Bella and Ella enter the club building, but they take a wrong turn and get lost. Finally, they enter an old-fashioned two-story hallway with a beautiful fountain in the middle of the room. That's when Bella and Ella realize that they are not alone. There are many ghosts here. Can you figure out the exact number? There are seven ghosts in this space. One of the ghosts is hiding inside the fountain. And the lady over there is not a ghost. She's standing on her feet and she's sweating. So she's very much alive. The lady is the owner of the property. She says, to get out of this place, you have to crack the following puzzle. Can you help Bella and Ella figure out what number is hiding under the question mark? It's 1. 5 equals 1 because 1 equals 5. That was mentioned earlier in the equation. Bella and Ella are very hungry. Finally, they get to the party and see two tables with snacks. Although they look identical, there are five differences between them. Can you spot those details? Feel free to pause the video if you need more time. Here they are! Bella and Ella take a couple of selfies at the party. Can you spot three differences between these pictures? Ah, one, two, and three. Bella goes to the dance floor, and Ella stays on the sofa. After a while, Bella returns and finds no Ella, only a creepy note on the sofa. We have imprisoned your friend in the middle of this labyrinth. 
Go save her before it's too late. Bella approaches the labyrinth entrance. She's worried that once she walks in, she won't be able to find her way out. Oh my god. How can she escape the labyrinth without getting lost and wasting too much time? She should put her right hand on the right wall and go forward touching it at all times. She'll be walking into traps along the way. But if Bella follows the right wall, she'll get out of traps and will eventually find her way out of the labyrinth. Let's take a look at this labyrinth from above. Can you help Bella find the correct path? Here's the only route leading to the final destination. Bella manages to find Ella in the center of the maze. Suddenly, a secret door opens, and a creepy voice announces, You can use this elevator to leave. But first, you have to enter a four-number passcode to turn it on. <laughs> can you help the ladies crack the code? Take a look at the four symbols on the elevator. It's a hint. Each image implies a number. The word crown consists of five words, so it implies five. Necklace implies eight, ring four, and diamond seven. And the code is 5847. Oh. Bella and Ella want to return to the party, but they face a guard who says, you'll have to crack my riddle if you want to come in. What is that thing that you have to break before you can use it? The ladies crack this mystery right away. What about you? The correct answer is an A. Yes! Bella and Ella are walking down the corridor. They face a locked door. There are five buttons on the door, but only one of them will let Bella and Ella pass. If they choose the wrong one, the door will get blocked forever. Can you help them choose the correct button? There's something special about almost all these buttons. The first one is unlike the others because it doesn't have an outline. The second one has a different shape. The third one has a different color. And the last one is smaller than all the others. The fourth button doesn't have any distinctions. That's what makes it so special. So Bella and Ella should press this one. Yay! The party goes on! Three guys approach Ella and invite her to the dance floor. But only one of them is safe to dance with. Can you decide who? The first guy has too many spikes on his clothes. He might accidentally scratch Ella. And the second guy is a sorcerer. He has a love potion in his pocket, so he can't be trusted either. Therefore, Ella should pick the third guy. Bella takes a picture of Ella on the dance floor. She freaks out right away. Oh my god! Why? There's a skeleton among the dancing people. Ella gets very thirsty after dancing and approaches a waiter. He offers her an infinite supply of free drinks if she can crack his riddle. I'll give you one glass of milk and one glass of water. You'll need to pour the two liquids into a bowl, but you should be able to separate the milk from the water later. You can't use any kind of dividers. It took Ella a while, but she cracked this riddle. What did she do? She poured all the water into a bowl and froze it. After that, she added the milk. Oh. Finally, Bella and Ella leave the party and enter a supermarket to grab some snacks. They see two ladies. One of them is married to their friend Mike. Can you guess who?
It's the lady on the left. Her shopping cart contains shampoo for men's hair and beard. Bella, Ella, and their common friends, Nick, Nancy, and Adam, are hanging out at Mike's place. The next morning, they find Mike unconscious in the living room. None of the five friends know what happened to him. The police show up and they find a note next to Mike's calendar. It reads 4, 12, 8, and 3. The detective already knows who attacked Mike. What about you? It was Adam. The note was next to a calendar. 4 implies April, 12 implies December, 8 August, and 3 March. Take the first three letters of each month, and you get the name Adam. The next day, Bella and Ella go skydiving. Oh no, Bella's parachute hasn't opened, and she's now plunging toward the ground. There are two places where she can land. Bella can either fall into the lake or into this large haystack. Can you help her choose the best option? Bella should try to fall on the hay. Can you see those creepy crocodiles hiding near the lake? Bella manages to land safely. She meets Ella and they go camping. Unfortunately, Ella gets bitten by a snake, and Bella is trying to suck the venom out of her leg. Mike is also on the trip. Suddenly, he spots a black widow spider on his arm. Who's in a bigger danger, Bella or Mike? Bella. If she has any scratches in her mouth, the venom will get inside her bloodstream. As for Mike, black widows rarely bite people, and the bites are rarely fatal. Serena is a private investigator. This year, she decided to spend her vacation at a fancy ski resort. Serena arrives at the main gates and takes a look at the entrance. Then, she turns around to tip her taxi driver. After that, she returns to the gates and spots three changes. Can you also see them? Here they are. Serena enters the hotel. Three porters offer to carry her bags. But one of them cannot help Serena with her luggage. Can you guess who and why? The guy in the middle has transparent hands that go through the walls. He's a ghost, so it's unlikely he'll be able to carry Serena's physical baggage. Serena approaches the reception desk. She's checking in along with three other people. Hello. Serena takes a look at her passports and immediately spots the fake one. Hmm. What about you? The second guy's picture is black and white. But it's not a crime. The third lady's document also looks fine, but the picture of the first lady has snow-capped mountains in the background. No matter what country she's from, the background in the passport photo should be plain. So this ID is fake. Finally, Serena receives a key card for her room. She goes there right away, but unfortunately, the door doesn't open. Serena returns to the reception to complain. She sees another lady complaining about the very same thing. Can you guess what's going on here? Remember the room number on Serena's key? It's 981. If we turn this number upside down, we'll get 186. The manager confused these two keys. The ladies should simply exchange the keys, and the incident will be over. Okay. Finally, Serena enters her fancy suite. She takes a couple of pictures to send them to her friend. Can you find 10 differences between them? Feel free to stop the video if you need more time.
Are you ready to see the answers? Here are all 10 differences. Serena unpacked her bags to go skiing. Oh no, she forgot her hat at home. Serena goes to the local winter sports store to purchase a new hat. Which items don't belong here? This toy robot, high heel sandals, and a plastic pyramid shouldn't be here. After shopping, Serena decides to visit the local bakery. Can you spot any extra items here? This can of pet food and a dog bowl doesn't belong here, as well as this cat tree. Ah. Finally, Serena is in her ski suit. She's riding in a cable car to the top of the mountain with other resort guests. Can you spot the one who hasn't paid for the lift? I bet this little mouse didn't pay for the ride. The fire alarm wakes Serena up in the middle of the night. One of the cottages on the territory of the ski resort caught fire. Oh no. Luckily, all the guests and staff members are safe. Serena finds three suspects. One of these people started the fire for sure. Can you guess who? It's the guy in the bathrobe. He's hiding a bottle of fire starter liquid in his pocket. In the morning, Serena goes to the breakfast buffet. There are four croissants on the tray. One of them is made of plastic. Oh. Can you spot which one? Someone has bitten off the first croissant, so it's probably real. The third croissant was a little burnt, so it's real duh. Take a closer look at the fourth croissant. Some chocolate leaked out of it onto the plate, so it must be real too. Therefore, only the second croissant can be plastic. Oh. Serena starts her breakfast. A young lady named Maya is eating with her husband, not far from Serena's table. Suddenly, Maya gets sick and faints. Oh her husband calls doctors and they arrive immediately. They conclude that Maya has eaten something poisonous. The husband says, it's impossible. My wife didn't eat or drink anything today, except for the breakfast on this table. I ate it too, and I feel fine. The doctors test the food, and surprisingly, it's perfectly fine. Oh. Serena has already cracked this mystery. What about you? The poison was in Maya's lip balm. Hmm. Serena suspects that Maya's husband poisoned her, so she decides to follow him to find some evidence. He enters his hotel room for a moment and then leaves. Serena sneaks into the room. She finds nothing suspicious except a hotel notebook. Someone tore out exactly one page from it. Fortunately, the writer pressed the pen very hard and left traces on the next page. Serena shades the paper with a pencil and reveals the following text. Can you help her decode this message? If we read this text backwards, we'll get Maya is in the hospital. Finish the job. Oh my God. Serena rushes to the hospital to get ahead of the criminal. She enters Maya's room and faces four clowns. One of them is the criminal and the rest are just actors who perform all over the hospital to uplift the patients. Can you spot the imposter? The guy with the red bow is the criminal. He sneaked it from the decorations in this room because he was rushing to disguise himself. Oh. Serena calls the hospital guards to arrest the imposter, but he pushes everyone away and escapes through the back door. Serena follows him and ends up in the parking lot. The criminal is hiding in one of these cars. Come to me. Can you find him? Oh. 
These three single cars seem empty, and they don't have any signs of break-in. Meanwhile, someone is moving in the back of this pickup truck. Busted! The police arrest the criminal and Maya's husband. Meanwhile, Serena returns to the hotel late at night to get some rest. Oh no! Her room is a mess! Someone clearly rummaged through her things. What's this? In the morning, Serena questions three suspects. The cleaning lady says, Yesterday afternoon, I changed your bed sheets, washed coffee stains off the carpet, and left. The manager says, I sent a repairman to fix the sink in your bathroom, but I myself didn't enter. The repairman says, Last night I visited your room to fix the sink. Your stuff was all over the place, but I just thought you were a messy person. Who's lying? The cleaning lady. She said she had removed the coffee stains from the carpet, but they're still here. Serena lands on a chair in the hotel lounge to sign a stack of postcards for her friends. Suddenly, she smells hot chocolate from the cafeteria. Mm. She goes there to order a cup for herself. In a couple of minutes, Serena returns to her chair. Oh no! The postcards are gone! She questions three people nearby. Mike says, I was reading a book all the time, so I didn't look around. Richard says, I was taking pictures of my girlfriend Stella. You can take a look if you don't believe me. And Stella says, Richard is telling the truth. I was posing for the camera. Why would I pay attention to your stuff? After hearing their stories, Serena knows for sure who's guilty. What about you? Take a closer look at Richard's pictures. Stella is in front of a fireplace. If we zoom in, we'll see the postcards in the fire. These liars use them to make the flame burn brighter and look better in the pictures. What? Richard apologizes and buys a new stack of postcards for Serena. She grabs one of them and writes the following rebus on it. Can you crack the meaning of this message? to infinity and beyond. Serena is having small talk with Mike. She asks about his hobbies. Instead of answering, Mike draws the following rebus. Can you crack it? He likes to swim underwater. Serena says, I see you like puzzles. Crack my riddle, and I'll get you a huge cup of hot chocolate. Hmm. Mike agrees. Here's the riddle. The task is to replace the question mark with the correct letter. The letters imply the last letter of the sum of these numbers. 3 times 6 is 18, so the answer is N. 3 times 7 is 21, so the answer is E. And so on. 3 times 0 is 0. That's why we should replace the question mark with 0. Ah. It's a beautiful morning. Megan wants to have a quick breakfast before work, but she only has three identical apples. Only one of them is safe to eat, while the other two are poisoned. Can you help her choose the best option? The second apple has a caterpillar in it, which means that there's no poison in the fruit, so it's safe to eat. Megan is riding her motorbike to work as usual. She drives around the same corner at a certain speed every day, regardless of whether it's rainy or sunny. However, if it's cloudy but not rainy, Megan usually goes faster. Why? There's a car wash on that corner. On rainy days, wet roads reduce traction. On sunny days, water from the car wash makes the road wet and causes the same effect. But if the weather forecast says there's a chance of rain, the car wash gets few clients and thus the road stays dry. That's why Megan passes the area faster. Megan is sitting in her office. 
Suddenly, a delivery guy enters a room holding a cardboard box. He sits down near Megan. Although she can't see, hear, or smell the contents of this box, she knows for sure what's there. How? Megan is allergic to cats. She began to experience the symptoms of her allergy. Megan is looking out of the office window. She sees a pile of pebbles, a carrot, and a pipe laying together in the middle of a garden. Any idea what happened here? Megan saw the remains of a melted snowman. Megan's boyfriend Stan sends her a selfie. She immediately realizes that he cheated. How did she know? Take a look at the background. There's someone's lipstick on the dresser. The lipstick probably doesn't belong to Megan. That's why she suspects that another woman has been visiting Stan's apartment. Megan goes to the office kitchen and finds two identical lunchboxes in the fridge. Can you find three differences between them? Here they are. Megan's co-worker Sarah claims that one of the lunchboxes belongs to her. Can you guess which one? The lid of the first lunchbox has a nail polish scratch on it. The color of the nail polish matches Megan's purple nails perfectly. Therefore, the second box must belong to Sarah. Megan's task is to find a rental beach house for her boss. She finds three available options. Can you help Megan choose the best one? According to the info box, the first house will be completed in a hundred years, so it's probably a scam. The second house should have four floors, but it only has two according to the picture. Therefore, Megan should pick the third option. After work, Megan goes to a hairdresser. A group of clients is waiting in the lobby, but it's not that simple. One of them is not from this planet. Can you guess who? It's the first lady. An earthling would hardly drink shampoo. Megan asks her hairdresser to dye her hair red. They apply the hair dye, wait a precise amount of time, and then wash it off. Oh no! Megan's hair is green! She interrogates three suspects. The hairdresser says, Honey, I have no idea what happened. I did everything according to instructions. The cleaning lady says, I didn't approach her hair dye. I'm allergic to all sorts of hair products. And the manager says, I'm so sorry, miss. Someone must have confused the packages with hair dye. Who's lying? The cleaning lady. She would hardly be able to work in a beauty salon if she really had allergies to all sorts of hair products. Megan is meeting her friend at a new nightclub. She enters the building and gets lost in the basement. Megan faces three doors leading outside this trap. Behind the first door, there's a bunch of gross snakes. Although they all look the same, some of them are venomous and some of them are not. Behind the second door, there's an ancient magic box. Anyone who dares open this box will be cursed. And there's a tunnel full of hungry guard dogs behind the third door. Which way is more or less safe? Megan should choose the second option. She can simply walk past the box without opening it and avoid the curse. Luckily, Megan manages to escape and finds the nightclub. The guard at the entrance demands a password. 
Megan forgot it. She only remembers that it's a six number combination. Can you help her crack the code? Take a look at the numbers written on the wall. Megan needs some lateral thinking here. The hint shows three fours, seven ones, and two sevens. So the code is three, four, seven, one, two, seven. Finally, Megan enters the party. She spots a famous influencer among the guests, Rob. Megan approaches and asks for a selfie. He agrees, but in the middle of the photo shoot, Rob suddenly faints. The police figure out that he's been poisoned. They question three witnesses. Rob's wife, Ashley, says, We're both on a juice diet. Rob and I only drank one juice all day long. I feel okay. I have no idea what happened to him. Rob's manager, Stella, says, I only talk to Rob once a day. He borrowed my earbuds because he forgot his own at home. And Daniel, Rob's brother, says, Rob couldn't stand the juice diet. So I secretly treated him to some sugar-free organic cookies. I hope it's not my fault. Who poisoned Rob? Stella. There's a bottle of ear poison inside her pocket. She put it on the earbuds. Finally, Megan arrives home. Oh no! Someone stole her favorite antique vase. She calls the police and they question three neighbors. Mia says, I was out of town. I just returned an hour ago and I was so tired after a long drive that I immediately went to bed. Tyler says, I was getting ready to paint my house, but it didn't seem the rain would stop soon. So I went to the movies instead. Anna says, My sister got sick. That's why I was busy looking after my little nephew. Who's lying? It was Mia. It's been raining for the whole day. If she'd returned home just an hour ago, the road under her car would be wet. Megan joins the local running marathon. All the participants run the same distance. Each gets ranked according to their own unique result. Megan turns out to be both the 50th fastest and the 50th slowest runner. How many runners are there in the marathon? Even though 100 sounds like a clear-cut answer, it's actually 99. Megan is the 50th in the sequence from 1 to 50 of the fastest runners. If she's the 50th slowest, there has to be 99 runners ranked from 50 to 99. Megan is visiting the world's tallest skyscraper. It took seven years to build it. Every year, the builders managed to double its height. How many years did it take the skyscraper to reach half its maximum height? Six years. If the constructors doubled the building's height every year, the skyscraper had to be half its final height a year before it was completed. 